originally from Malawi, but you've been in this country for so long. Exactly. 30 some odd years. Over 35 years. Yeah, yeah. right. Mm -hmm. But your heart has always been in Malawi. Always. Always. And when I first heard about you, and I had to do a little searching, I said, where's Malawi? You know, yeah, it's like yeah. sort of one of those, you've heard it, but you yeah, don't know where it is. Exactly. And I did look it up and got a little background on the country. Uh, but before we go there, let me just explain to everybody that you are renowned in this country mm -hmm. as a uh, coach for soccer. Mm -hmm. And he uh, did coach the Malawi Olympic team mm -hmm. years ago. Yeah. So, and you, you've done so much with this, and yeah. that kind of brought your, your soccer, you, you the were passion. there and here, mm -hmm. you were at University of Massachusetts yes. and SUNY and yeah. all over teaching, mm -hmm. Wisconsin, um, but that soccer kind of hung in your mind to help the kids right. in Malawi. Yeah. Tell our viewers about this. Well, I grew up in Malawi, and I was born there, and I live in Chituka village. This is where my upbringing, my foundation was... Uh, I discovered soccer at a very young age, sports in general, so to speak. So I was very active. My brothers, my sisters, wished to play sports and, and hang out and do things of that nature. So uh, when I first left Malawi in 1964, I had already really embraced myself in sports, and I loved it. So coming to America in 1967 uh, and uh, participating in high school sports here, both soccer and track and field, but soccer was really my you passion. You went to University of Massachusetts. I'm a UMass right. graduate, but I went to Mamaronic High School in New York, downstate. Oh, okay. Yeah, and my father was a diplomat. So that's why I oh, came Oh, that's how you got here. That's why I got here. And uh, through all that connection of playing sports and really developing a passion for athletics, I did a phys ed uh, major at UMass. I was supposed to go back to Malawi and work for Malawi national team, which I did. But uh, at that time, the government was not uh, the best place to be. Was that uh, dictatorship? Was unstable. Was unstable. So I kind of defected, came back to America in 1978, 80, and began my career as a coach. So the soccer has been in my, my blood. And coaching women's soccer here was uh, my first job that I had at the University of Massachusetts before soccer was popular. Uh, that was 1980. And, and now it's quite popular. Exactly, exactly. Title, but nine, you, you, title you, nine was coming up. So we're, I was very fortunate on uh, my product of Title Nine. Oh, okay. That helped me get the job so to speak, and because women's soccer was just studying, and they were looking for coaches. So I just jumped in there and said, I'll, I'll do it. Sure. So it was great. And it, it mm -hmm. turned out to be very good for you. Oh, yeah. From there, just kind of snowballed uh, where I, I coached, you know, some of the best players in the country. Uh, I went to uh, Amherst College, coached there again, uh, and I went to University of Wisconsin, Madison, the Big Ten University, coached the Minnesota. Absolutely. So I've coached, I've coached both men and women in this country, and uh, then I finished up pursuing. With that in mind, uh, soccer being part of my life, in 1990, my father and ma my mother died and when I was still coaching at Amherst College. And uh, at that time, I didn't want to go back to Malawi. I refused to go back to Malawi. The government was so bad, and they told me, don't go, don't go home. So I had a, you know, one of those moments where I said I had a love-hate relationship mm -hmm. with my country. Because it's still your home. Yeah, but when mom and dad t passed away, I went to their funerals. That's what I found out that I, I belong to my people, and what can I do to help? But one thing I knew is was sports. You know, I'm not, I don't have anything else. So uh, I figured I'd come back here and start the Chituka Village Project. So it began in 1990. Uh, 95, I went back home. I brought my own equipment from Amherst College, my own soccer balls and uniforms, and I uh, gave out to my local primary school that I went to. And they loved it, because they have no soccer balls over there. Mm -hmm. They have no, they have nothing. No, no, no. Uh, no ways of saving up to go buy a ball. They made their own ball for mangoes I know, and I oranges. saw that on your thing. Are you, oh. Yeah, that's what we did. So, yeah. but getting a soccer ball, a used soccer ball, by the way, it was not brand new soccer ball. They were used, they used uniforms. Didn't make any difference. Mm -mm. They so them was like, wow, we have a ball we're going to play with. So yeah. it started then, and because soccer was the main ingredient to think about what can I do to help my people. So after so many years of coaching different universities, and uh, my heart started thinking about when can I go home? What can I do when I go home? And uh, the idea was starting a, a, a foundation. And uh, it came and to- And we're looking yeah, at some of the photos yeah, It here. came about in about, you know, 90, I would say about 98, when I was at University of Wisconsin, we started talking about it. When I came here in 2003 at the SUNY Albany, they really started hitting me. I think about becoming a citizen. I think I should have maybe, 
get an idea of how I can negotiate to fund a, a, a small charity uh, that can bring some happiness to the people of my village. Basically, Chutuka village is, there's no running water, there's no electricity, it's a living in the 1700s. We see those videos, the roads are dirt and the bridges run out, you know, the, if it rains, that bridge will be gone by tomorrow. Mm -hmm. It happens about 10 times over, we keep on bringing it up. And you even and, said uh, the latrines, they're not. Oh yeah, oh yeah, my, those, those are latrines in the background. I used to, there's no running water, you just kind of help yourself in the bushes. And then they just dig a new one. Right, and and exactly. If you're lucky, you have a latrine, but most of the time they just go in the bushes, mm -hmm. behind the tree, in, the, in tall grasses, that's it. So when you have diseases. And this makes it difficult mm -hmm. on young women. Very, very. Uh, our girls especially, it's a tough call uh, because uh, they're the ones, I, I feel, they maintain our village, but they're also they're the ones who are like last, they're the third class citizens in the village. They do most of the work, but they're also less recognized. They're not pushed to become, you know, self-sufficient in their own lives. Mm -hmm. So one of they the- They don't feel that worth. No, they don't feel that worth. So one of the things I remember when my mom was still alive, she was very good about helping the local village people with their, you know, health issues, birthing, taking care of the children, make sure they are taking care of their family, and showing them how to sew, how to knit, which you know how to, how to bake, all those issues they don't know how to do. So with my project right now, I really started thinking about soccer as a way of attracting attention. Making and them want to go to school. Exactly. Making them exactly, want to do exactly. something. Exactly. So that's something that I know to do. And yeah. I, I love to coach kids. I love to teach. So I figured if I start soccer, it will give awareness why I'm there for. It's really I'm there for education. How many of them can they go to school in a given day, in a given moment, in a given month? Because education is not mandatory. Because they can't do that. They have, the government doesn't have a budget to say you have to go to school. There's no way they're going to But do that it. might change because well. we, we need to say <laughs> one thing here. Yeah, yeah. His aunt yeah. is the president yeah. of Malawi, the yeah. first woman president. Right. Second in Africa. Second in Africa. Yeah. Yeah. And she's very progressive. She's been for all through her life. She was uh, she comes from an abused marriage before she married my uncle, and she really became a, a voice for women and children in Africa. So she's well known. She's one of the top five women in the, in the world who advocate uh, women's rights, empowering women and children, especially in Africa, to make sure that they're getting you know their way into, of life that's good for them. Make sure they're going to school, they're learning and to become a strong member of the society. And we, she's been doing that before she became vice president. She has her own business, her own foundation, her own schools before she became president. So she knows what we need. So my job is to help her continue her mission, which is helping children, especially girls in the village, in the rural area where there's nothing for them. Well, I wish we had another hour to talk to yeah. you, and I hope that you will come back again yeah. and talk more about what's happening and yeah. perhaps talk about the education system and yeah. what the girls are going through. I'd love to have you back on again I because it. I think your message is so strong. If someone wants to help you, yeah. what website should they go to? I think yeah. we have two websites. Yeah, I got two websites. One is a you know, typical soccer website, uh, bandaborasoccer.com uh, website or bandaborasportsfoundation.org website. Good. And um, uh, you can Google me and you can find my, my name. Absolutely. And uh, he's very prominent. So. And, but he's happy to tell you all about his project. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you for you. being here. Please come back here. again. I would like to learn more about your, your well, and let the viewers know more about well, it. Appreciate I've been reading a lot about it, and yeah. I'm just so impressed with what you're doing. Thank you for having okay. me. Uh, we're going to take a quick break, and we're going to be looking at, we're going to be looking at Malawi, I think. He's going to show a little bit more this of that, so and nice. then we're going to be showing it next week as well. So please stay tuned. Along Lake Malawi lies one of the most beautiful districts called Nkata Bay. Kituka village in Nkata Bay district in Malawi is where coach Ken Banda comes from. This is Chituka farm where the Mtalika Banda family settled 40 years ago. Children in Malawi face many disadvantages, including poverty, diseases, and low life expectancies. As a result, most of the children do not have the opportunity to become engaged in education, just like the other children in other countries across the globe.
This is Malengam Zoma Primary School in the heart of Chituka village. This is Malengam Zoma Primary School that uh, is in Chituka village in Kadabe district, Kadabe south district. Malengam Zoma is a Chituka village primary school that I attended in 1964. And the last time I was here as a student, I'm sure things have changed now, but when I'm looking at Malangam Zoma, it brings me fond memories as a child, because this is where I started my education, and uh, I, have, I always remember how the fun I had as a child, almost like a, a beginning of my career. At the same time, the school, the teachers, just the whole community was behind uh, my upbringing. Due to lack of a library, Children are apt to read either on the circle pitch, under the tree, or just somewhere they feel very comfortable around the school environment. With the help of our sponsors and donors in the US, a container was shipped to Chituka, which contained school supplies, which included the following sports equipment, for soccer, track and field, pens and pencils, notebooks, and reading books. Most of the girls failed to complete their primary school education because of teenage pregnancies. It is the status symbol for girls in the village to have kids at a young age. This is seen as a prestigious position for womanhood at such a young age. Most young girls want to gain acceptance from the community to show off their womanhood. The third story is that girls go out and seek male partners who already have babies with other young girls in the same village, which means that older males prey on these young girls. Furthermore, these babies die before the age of five because of poverty and lack of health clinics and a balanced diet to enhance the children's growth. There is a need to provide civic education to these girls in the primary schools and to motivate them to know the reason why they have to pursue their education. Most children in Malangam Zoma do not have the skills of learning. Parents are not educated, therefore do not play any role to teach the young children why they have to go to school. The school environment is taken to be a place where they just want to waste time and do not like learning environment. At Malangozoma Primary School, you have children staying two, three days without the teacher, teaching the children. Most of the children fail to follow instructions or performing simple tasks. This was observed during the soccer clinic demonstration where they were asked to make a straight line and they failed. The school is overcrowded with an average of 85 children sitting in one classroom. Most of the children lack discipline in their everyday life at home, which translates in the lack of discipline at school. The children are not able to sit still and concentrate on the instructions by the teachers. The actual classroom do not provide a sense of belief to the children that it's a learning center because of broken desks, poor ventilation, unsafe doors, dirty walls, and leaking ceilings. There is a need to simplify everything, such as show them how to learn simple tasks that deals with listening and paying attention in the classroom. School supplies like reading books were given to them so that they can improve the reading and writing skills. For the first time, the Bandabora Sports Foundation Chituka Village Project is implementing the after-school education mentoring program that will help their learning abilities. Now it's time for soccer, especially for the young girls.
There is a need to empower the girls with a sport that does not discriminate in any way regardless of their gender. Soccer is a global sport which is very much accepted in many societies. It's a sport that can break the barriers where boys have had an upper hand in soccer. Bounder Baller wants to encourage young girls to be more involved in playing soccer such that they master the same skills just like the boys. Despite Bounder Baller Sports Foundation's role, it's important that the community at large takes ownership to develop the positive attitude to accept change in their lives for the sake of their children. Parents have to play a bigger role to show that they care for their children's education. Now, I'm here today uh, to introduce our Chutuka Village project as one of the main uh, passion and for my uh, Band Bowler Sports Foundation. Chutuka Village project is going to assist the boys and girls of Malangamzoma in the education and uh, especially improving their life and we're hoping our bringing these supplies to them will show that our commitment to the future of this community, to this village, as, the, uh, as we grow as a, as, a, as a country. You can see here we are now in the headmaster's office. It's very limited space. One of room for two people in here. I mean, if you should be for just one person, and uh, definitely it's, it's not a conducive to a good working area. So we have to figure out something else in the next few years. How we can provide the supplies and equipment so that he can do a better job of uh, leading his school to the next day. Uh, uh, calendar, school calendars. This is very limited right now. It's very limited what he can do as a, as a, a leader of the school. So this is uh, one of the things that we have to look at as a project. So anyone can help us with this, we we'll welcome you to look into this and hopefully find it in a way that can be uh, an improvement. Here we are about to review uh, the hygiene situation that it can be result in uh, serious issues when it comes to health. And what we're looking here is, is uh, we like to call them toilets, but they're not really toilets. These are, these are latrines, but there's no running water in here. Uh, so these are buildings, but when they fill up, they just take them down and destroy them and then dig up other latrines. So uh, since 1964, I'm sure they've dug up a lot of them around this area. So this is what is for this time. And for girls, this is be, to me, this is a tremendous disadvantage. Uh, because there's no running water, and girls who reach uh, puberty, uh, and they, they don't come to school, they stay home, because here there's no uh, sewage system for them to use.